real-time MIDI input. In this lesson, I'm going to show you how you can use a MIDI keyboard to enter notes into MuseScore in real time, meaning I'm going to play in rhythm and MuseScore is going to notate the durations for me. Now before you get too excited about that possibility, I do want to give some caveats here. It is a very limited facility um, that's only capable of some pretty simple things. So for instance, we're only going to be able to do one staff at a time. We're not going to be able to play the piano with both hands and have the notes automatically assigned to staves. Furthermore, we're not going to be able to be like arbitrarily complex with our rhythms. What MuseScore is actually going to do is have a metronome uh, that clicks and basically each click is going to increase the length of a note according to whatever duration is selected on the toolbar. So you're going to kind of pre-select a duration, MuseScore is going to click the metronome. So you'll get to see how this all works, but basically what it really means is you're not going to just play in real time. You're going to play according to some very specific rules for how notation is going to work. So with those caveats out of the way, let me show you how we're going to actually go about doing this. We're going to first need to make sure your keyboard is connected and turned on before you start MuseScore. And then you'll go to Edit Preferences and on the I.O. tab, you'll make sure that your device is selected under MIDI input here. Now, I don't actually have a MIDI keyboard connected that I'm going to use in this demonstration. I'm going to use the on-screen piano keyboard, which is going to make things easier to see, but it's going to work exactly the same way. So that is something you're going to um, need to have uh, connected. But the other thing you're going to need to do, and you only need to do this once, is set up shortcuts for a command called real-time advance. So I'm going to go now to the shortcuts section, and I'll type real into the search box. And we'll see that there is a command called real-time advance, and it has a shortcut enter. Depending on the design of your keyboard, that enter might actually just enter a system break into your score. And in any case, I don't want enter because I need my right hand to press enter and I'm going to be using my right hand on the keyboard. So I want to change this to a key that I can strike with my left hand more easily. So I'm going to click define and then type backtick because that's a command that, that is a key that is not being used for anything else. And I can go ahead and say save. Now you can also go to the MIDI mappings section of this same dialog, scroll down to the bottom, and you'll see real-time advance there. This allows you to assign that command to some control on your MIDI keyboard. So if I select that and then assign MIDI mapping, it's going to wait for me to either press a key on my keyboard or a button on my keyboard or use a foot pedal. The foot pedal would be a great option, except that at least on my piano, uh, pressing the foot pedal actually sends a whole bunch of MIDI messages. And so uh, I can't get it to only send one, uh, making it not actually useful for this. So I'm not going to be using the foot pedal here. So I will cancel out of that, but then hit OK to make sure that my backtick assignment works. All right, enough talking. Let's actually start entering some music and see how this works. So I'm going to press P to display the on-screen piano keyboard, but you can just use your MIDI keyboard, assuming it's all connected. And now I'm going to go into node input mode, but a special version of node input mode. I'm going to uh, long click the node input icon on the toolbar, and then you'll see two different options here, real-time metronome and real-time foot pedal. I'm gonna choose the metronome option first. Now when I do that, notice the node input icon changes to a metronome, and you can see we are in node input mode. We've got the cursor here. If I then press escape to leave node input mode, we're not in node input any mode anymore, but notice the icon is still showing the metronome. This is telling me that if I re-enter node input mode just by pressing N, I'm still going to be in that real-time metronome mode. All right, you ready? I'm going to hold down a key now, and I'm going to use the, the piano keyboard on screen, but it could just as well be a MIDI keyboard. I'm going to hold this thing down and listen to the metronome. 
Well, I held it down for four clicks and you'll see I got a whole note. I got a whole note and it's also showing it being tied to another note and it disappeared as soon as I moved my mouse off the key. Let me do that again by pressing D and holding it for four clicks. Notice that it is still showing a D being tied into this next measure because it's waiting to see if I'm going to hold it longer. But of course I am not. I have let go of it already. If I now press an E and hold it for two clicks, I have a half note. But it's not a half note yet. It's MuseScore is waiting for uh, more information to know the correct way to notate this. When you finish a measure, it's going to renotate everything correctly. So if I now do an F and hold it for two beats, now I get my half notes. Now what if you want eighth notes? Well, the way you're going to get eighth notes is we're going to change on the note input toolbar to eighth notes. And now every click of the metronome is an eighth note. If I hold it for two clicks, now it's a quarter note. And if I want, uh, oh, I let go of it a little too soon. Let me undo that. And let me try that again. And uh, let's undo a little further. And now I'm going to try it again. And now I'll hold the C for four clicks. And I get the half note. So you can already see it is a little bit fiddly here. It's very sensitive to exactly when you release the key. It's not really like you're just playing in rhythm, but it does respond to how long you hold each key. And to get rests in there, we're going to use that real-time advance command. When I press that, it's going to start the metronome, and then when I press it again, it will stop it. So if I want to enter a beat and a half of rest now, I'm going to listen. I'm going to press that back tick and listen for three clicks, and press it again, and that stops the metronome. And now I can start entering some more notes. and so forth. So that's how the metronome uh, version works. Now the actual speed of that metronome is predefined. If I want to change that, I can let me, uh, leave note input mode by pressing escape. I can go to edit, preferences, and on the note input tab here, there's a setting here for delay between notes in automatic real-time mode, and it defaults to 750 milliseconds, which is three-quarters of a second. Uh, well, one per second would be uh, 60, uh, per, per, uh, um, 60 beats a minute, so it's somewhat faster than that, right? But if you uh, set this to be a longer delay, you'll get a slower metronome. It's not going to actually pay attention to the tempo. Instead, it pays attention to this setting. So that's how that metronome setting works. Um, the other way, though, we can do this, and I actually find maybe this is a slightly more useful way, is instead of that metronome setting, I'm going to long tap the toolbar again, and this time use the option that says real-time foot pedal. And there's a picture of a foot. Now, as I said, my sustain pedal is not really going to do the job. I'm going to use back tick again for this. But now, instead of listening for the metronome, I'm going to press back tick once, and that will be my metronome. I mean, every time I press back tick, that will be a tick of the metronome. So let's take a look at what this actually means. I'm going to go ahead and uh, um, find myself a nice empty area of my score to enter notes in. I'll go into node input mode. I've selected the foot pedal method. Go into node input mode by pressing N. And now I'll click a key on the keyboard. And no matter how long I hold this key, you'll see that it's not doing anything. It shows the note it's about to enter, but the cursor hasn't moved on. What I can do now is press back tick. And every time I press back tick, that's going to be like a tick of the metronome. So press it three times to get three beats. And then I can change to D and press it once. And then if I want to enter some eighth notes, I can change to eighth note on the toolbar. 
and now I can enter some eighth notes. E once, F once, and then G. I'll hold this one twice, and then I'll press A and do that one four times, and so forth. So this, I find, is actually um, a little less finicky to work with. Uh, it's still not playing in real time, but it does have that idea of you just hold a key kind of as long as you want and you press the back tick or whatever uh, command you've assigned for real time advance. And uh, as many times as you do it, that's how long the note gets. So it does have that relationship of MuseScore figuring out the duration automatically in that way. The last thing I want to show you here is that if I don't press a key on the keyboard, then backtick will do rest. So again, if I want three eighth notes worth of rest, I'll just press backtick three times with no key actually pressed on the keyboard. And that gave me my three eighth rests, and now I can enter uh, a note and the back tick to enter an eighth note. So if I actually say, oh, I'm actually done with this measure and press escape, you'll notice it didn't rewrite this measure appropriately. It didn't combine the rests or anything, but I, that's because I never completed the measure, right? I just pressed escape. If you need to clean up any measures, you can select it and then go to tools, uh, the uh, command there to regroup rhythms, this will often do the job. And so in this case, it did a nice job of, of combining those rests to give me the quarter rest and eighth rest. And so this is actually all correct. It doesn't always do it completely correctly. Sometimes you might have to uh, just correct some, uh, correct some note durations yourself. So this is how the real-time MIDI input functions work in MuseScore. As you can see, they're, they are limited. Uh, they are not anywhere as uh, sophisticated as you just being able to play whatever you want and having it notated, but they are there. And if you find it useful, now you know how to use it.